Welcome to the Great Mead Project Year 2. Last year we had a blast making a community brew with a set of ingredients and we wanted to do it again. For this year's Great Mead Project, we wanted to do something different. We first collected a great group of home brewers with YouTube channels to embark on this journey. So here are all the people involved. Once we had our group, we each picked two ingredients to put in the running for the recipe. After everyone had picked their ingredients, we put them out for you to vote on. We had a bunch of community members from all of our communities go and order the ingredients and how they wanted us to use them. We took the top three ingredients that were voted on and made those part of the recipe. Now we each are making this mead in the way that we want, but we have to use rose, vanilla, and lavender as the main flavor profile. This brew is obviously very floral, grandma-like, it's gonna be interesting to see how we can balance these ingredients together. You can find every other person's interpretation of this brew on their channels, and you can find that list below. For my version, I wanted to try something a little different. I first started by buying a bunch of rose petals from Amazon. I thought it'd be really interesting to try and get rose character out of oak. Rather than buy some rose wood to oak on, we soaked the oak spiral in some warm water and a lot of roses for about six days. We then let it dry, and to my surprise, it does have some rose aromatics. We then had to tackle how we were going to deal with the lavender and vanilla. I decided to play these a little more safe, so we took about six teaspoons of lavender petals and boiled them into about six cups of water for five minutes. We then took and pitched our honey, which we are gonna use Tupelo honey for the primary for this brew, and then we're planning on using black locust honey for back sweetening. For the vanilla side, we're splitting a vanilla bean and throwing it into the primary. The recipe for my version is on screen and I'm very curious to see how it turns out. I do believe it'll be very interesting. We're adding about four grams of Fermate O to this brew. I believe that will help it finish fermenting and give us the cleanest fermentation possible. After the primary, we ended at 1.000. We then let it set for a little bit longer, made sure it'd clear up, and it did. We then racked it into a new container stabilized it with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite, and we are deciding now to move forward with that rose wood. So I went ahead and added that rose wood into this brew, and we're gonna let it set for enough time for it to get some woody character and hopefully some rose character from this. So you can see we're now adding rose water to this. That's because my idea didn't work. This brew got enough oak character and I was afraid it would be too oaky, so we went ahead and pulled the spiral out and added rose water to get more flavor. We didn't quite get enough vanilla flavor from the bean itself, so we added one teaspoon of vanilla extract. We then let this brew set for a while. Final gravity was still about the same. After it sat for a few more months, we went ahead and cleared it with chitosan and kisasol and then bottled it. We're now ready to see what this brew tastes like. Here we go. All right, and here we are for the finale of this awesome mead. It's great mead project year two and um, I really wanted to be unique with that whole spiral idea of soaking it in the rose petals and like taking in that flavor honestly it didn't really work that well I kind of explained it earlier but it provided more oak not a lot of rose which is why we ended up adding rose water to help this get that rose flavor there so I attempted to be unique and do that but it didn't really do much so this mead's interesting. It's um, about 14% ABV. It has been bottled. I've got all my bottles here. I've got a little bit left over. I literally just bottled a moment ago. This is a hazy bottle. I'm trying to decide, do I go and open up? Do I commit and open up a bottle? Yeah, maybe this, maybe this bottle will be a little bit better at least. All right, I am gonna go and open up this. This was extra, but it, it was the last little bit, so it's got some haze. Literally just bottled this, so it should be nice. It is cleared with uh, Chitosan and Kisasol. Now, is it perfectly clear? No, but that is okay, in my opinion. Let's get a aroma check to see what this thing smells like. I mean, it is very perfumey, very bright floral, obviously. You got the lavender there. Vanilla can sometimes add that. Then your honey is uh, prominent with that floral value. The rose is mixing in all of that. It's just highly floral. Pretty complex, I would say. Surprisingly, not a lot of booze character on the nose. I expected there to be more booze because it's 14% and we're only about five months old. So I expected a lot of boozy character. It smells pretty good, actually. Let's taste it. Mm. 
Woo! Yeah, <laughs> a little more boozy on the palate than uh, on the nose, but there's a lot of that aromatic coming from the, the floral side that's hiding things. Oh yeah. Okay, so this is, uh, without spoiling too much, this is quite an over overwhelming amount of flavor between this highly lavendery kind of um, flowery side, a little bit of rose, the rose water probably didn't do as much rose flavor as I wanted, honestly, but it's it was something, it's better than that silly spiral idea. And the vanilla is definitely there, definitely there. It adds a nice like um, softness to this so that it does have a little more softer round feel with that oak in there, it's kind of nice. I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of gonna ready to hate on this, but I hadn't tasted it in a while and I was just like, I remember the last time I tasted it and I was like, it's obtrusively perfumey. It's a grandma. It is like you, you hugged your grandma and she got too much of that perfume and you somehow inhaled it. That is that is what it was like in my mind. It's not necessarily as crazy in truth. Again, not the clearest brew, but I think it's pretty good. It's interesting. Is it something I'm gonna make on a regular basis? Definitely not, I'll be honest. Um, I, it was fun because I learned how to work with lavender in using it as a tea. I don't think I would do that different. I loved that idea. The rose element, I think I probably could have saved my money and used the petals actually as part of that tea or maybe actually just steeped in like the, the fermentation, primary fermentation or some point, those rose petals to get more fragrance and stuff out of them. It also provided some tannin. I have done stuff with rose petals before in fermentation and it <laughs> provides a lot of tannin. And then the vanilla could have gone a multitude of ways, but I really like vanilla extract because it's easier, honestly, and cheaper. Um, you could go vanilla bean, but it just gets expensive. You could do a tincture, all of those things. You have options if you wanna use these things. All together, am I loving this combination of ingredients? Not really. However, it was fun, a good experiment for me. You guys know if you watch my content that I make a lot of mead and a lot of really crazy mead. So this was kind of fun to do something new and different. So this has been my version of this mead. The very most fun thing about this is there are 10 versions of this brew on the internet done with a multitude of variations and a multitude of people. So you can go check out, there's a link below to um, all of the channels involved but there's also a link to the videos and we'll probably have a playlist you can click on. But feel free to check out all of the other people involved with the Great Mead Project. This is a giant community collaborative thing and it's been a ton of fun and I've, I'm, pr I'm pretty proud of this for um, I feel like what was handed to me, the challenge ahead, it's pretty good. I am very curious. I don't know what other people are doing with theirs. I'll be honest. I have not talked to them enough to say like, I know, you know, Hodge is doing this specific thing, but I, I am definitely excited to see what they're going to do. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you will come back for some more content. If you are from one of their channels and you haven't seen me before, feel free to hit subscribe. I make a lot of mead and a lot of mead content. So you'll, uh, I don't think you'll ever run out of stuff to watch from me, uh, quite honestly. So go check out all of those channels below. The recipe and stuff for this one will be below if you just so happen to want to try it. But uh, this has been a lot of fun and I hope that you guys have a fantastic day and you will make some more mead. So thank you for watching. See you next time.